Cheers and salutations. Welcome one and all to Americans Learn. My name is Kit, and today we have ourselves a fun video. But before we get started, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit that ring bell notification. That way all of you are made aware when we upload new content onto our YouTube channel. And now today, today we return back to Sabaton history, and I am going to follow through with my promise. I know I've been doing the videos out of order, but from here on out, starting from beginning to end, Starting with their first video, The Battle of Windsor, Sabaton History, 001 official. Can't wait to check it out. And as always, folks, if this is the kind of content that all of you like here for our YouTube channel, Americans Learn, well then, hey, give us your feedback. And if there's any other additional videos that we should check out that are historical, that will help us inform uh, all of us about the world that we live in and the events that help shape the world that we live in, Type it in the comment section below. Share the links. We're more than happy to uh, hear the, about the feedback from all of you, our viewing audience. But another thing, too, before I hit the play button, one big favor. In all the videos that we watch, the original video is in the description box below. That link is for the original video. So please support Sabaton History. They literally have a huge treasure trove of videos for all of us to enjoy. But in order for us to fully enjoy them, I'm at least expecting all of you to do the right thing, and that is support the original content creators. It's the right thing to do. A lot of time and effort is made into making these videos. So please share the love, show some support to them, and uh, let's all have a great time and uh, get our learn on here at Americans Learn. And as always, starting from the beginning, that's right, I followed through as a promise. Let's get ready to play this video. So grab yourself a tasty snack and a tasty beverage, and let's check it out in a three, a two, a one. I'm Indy Nidell. I'm Par from Sabaton, and this is Sabaton History. I like that intro. <laughs> Sorry, just, 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 just throwing it out there. I like that intro. Contrary to popular opinion, Polish resistance when the Germans invaded in September 1939 was a lot stronger and more determined than you might think. Our really? song, 40 to 1, that song that made Sabaton popular in Poland, is just about that. The song, 40 to 1, is about the Battle of Vizna. Let's look at the history. How a small detachment of around 720 Polish infantrymen held off more than 40,000 German soldiers for over three days. I've never heard of this. Now, um, I do have, you know, some basic understanding of it because uh, obviously not, not of this battle, but of what initiated uh, the overall conflict of the Second World War. And, of course, what does uh, our media and history books share? It's usually the tipping point was the invasion of Poland. And, um, wow, I, I never heard of that. 700 Infantrymen, Polish infantrymen versus 40,000 German soldiers. That's incredible. A story that has even entered Polish lore as the Polish Thermopylae, Polski Thermopylae. Mm. Okay, September 1939, the German invasion of Poland has begun. So silent before the storm. Chosen to stand as one outnumbered by far. The orders from high command. Fight back all your ground. In early September it came. A war unknown to the world. Now, Poland will soon also be invaded by the Soviet Union. And within six weeks will be divided by those two great powers. But we're still in the first week of the German invasion. On the 7th, the 19th Army Corps of Heeresgruppe Nord, part of the German 3rd Army under General Heinz Guderian, was quickly advancing to try and cross the river Biebrze, a tributary of the river Narev, east of the town of Vizna. By doing so, it would be able to encircle the Polish Narev Corps and then close in on Warsaw from the northeast. Now, the Polish army had begun building defense works around the strategic crossing where the Biebrze and Narev meet since early 1939, when the possibility of war began really looming. The crossing is surrounded by swamps and bogs, so a system of echelon bunkers and pillboxes on the hills overlooking the rivers would be a serious threat to any army trying to make a crossing. 
thing is, as the German Panzer Corps approached, the defense works were not completed. Only 12 major bunkers were battle ready, and there were a few machine gun pillboxes spread out over two actual lines of defense. The big flaw, though, was that the system did not have any larger anti-tank guns or mortars. And with a force of 350 tanks approaching, this flaw was now a major problem. Uh, all right, look, uh, if I'm hearing about 350 tanks. I don't care how brave you are. I mean, you got to be a little nervous. Um, and by the way, again, this is the early, at least again, I'm not the historical expert here, but I'm pretty sure that this is the beginning stages of the infamous phrase Blitzkrieg, uh, done by the Panzers, of course. Um, that's incredible. That's a huge amount of bravery. I had no idea about this Polish Thermopylae. The Polish defenders, commanded by Captain Vladislav Raginius, had quickly thrown up some anti-tank obstacles, prepared the forward approach with trenches and barbed wire, and mined the riverbanks. Raginius himself had chosen the bunker in the middle as his command post, but, you know, he must have known that with only six 7.6 guns, a few dozen machine guns, and only a pair of anti-tank rifles, he could... Yo! How are you gonna hold off? Could not hope to hold out forever, but as German planes dropped propaganda leaflets from the skies, urging the Poles to surrender, Raginus vowed that he would, in fact, die trying. The first skirmish between German and Polish recon units was fought for the village of Vizna on the 7th. Ah, uh, Vizna, I said starting with the W's. Apologies for pronouncing the battle name wrong. But the Poles gave up what was an undefendable village without serious resistance. So already at the beginning of the action, it looks like the Poles have been routed. But they haven't given up and they have not fled. They have retreated back over the river into the safety of their bunkers. The Germans pursued them, but Polish engineers blew the bridges to stop them. The battle had begun. German heavy artillery was brought up and pounded the Polish positions throughout the remainder of the day. The Polish artillery was no match for this and was forced to withdraw, but the Polish bunkers held. Stuka bombardments from the air also failed to break them since the walls of those bunkers were over one and a half meters thick and reinforced with steel plates. German assault troops came next, attacking over the next two days, but as soon as they crossed the river, they were hit by machine gun fire from the forward Polish pillboxes. Suffering heavy casualties, they were wow. forced to retreat time and again. However, Great. All right. The evening of the 8th, as German tanks began to cross, and with no adequate measures to deal with them and overall limited ammunition, the Polish infantry withdrew from their forward lines near the river to the safety of the bunkers. The German tanks rolled over and through those lines, but their guns could not penetrate the bunkers, nor could they provide enough cover for the infantry to follow. It was a somewhat bizarre stalemate, yet without help, Wow. That's... Huh. I guess the Germans were really overconfident in thinking that they could easily overwhelm those defenses, like, right away. From any reinforcements or any real anti-tank capability, the Polish soldiers were now trapped. Another flaw in the bunker system now became apparent. The major bunkers were sometimes too far away from each other to provide adequate support and could not cover each other's blind spots. So it turned out that the Germans were able to attack and isolate them one after the other. The first bunkers to fall were the ones just across the Narev River. Concentrated heavy artillery bombardment and advancing tanks forced the defenders to flee or else be completely encircled. 
The other bunkers held out until the 10th. But in the early morning that day, after three days of holding off 40 to 1 odds, the Poles faced defeat, as small platoons of German combat engineers could finally take out the damaged bunkers with explosives, mm. the tanks providing covering fire. One after the other was destroyed, and the Germans closed in on Captain Ragina's command center. By this time, most of his company was reportedly either dead or wounded, and the ammunition was nearly finished. Captain Reginus finally ordered his men to surrender their weapons since the battle, that they could not win, was effectively over. True to his word, though, Captain Reginus died by clutching a grenade to his body in his command bunker. They had held out for over three days. Wow. Wow, he followed through with his promise. That's dedication. True dedication. I, I've i never heard of this. And now I will never forget the Battle of Vinza. I'm so glad. I, seriously, shout out to you, the audience, for enlightening us about Sabaton History's YouTube channel. Um, wow, all of you are awesome. I learned something, and I hope all of you have learned something here, too against some of the strongest forces in the entire German army. That is the story of the Polish Thermopylae. According to some, Guderian threatened to shoot Polish prisoners if they did not give up. Though that seems unlikely since the battle was already won and it's out of character for Guderian. But okay, it's possible. We don't know for sure. And this is important here. First-hand sources on the battle are fairly few. The German battle records don't really mention the engagement, and Polish sources differ on the strength of the defenders. So we don't have any concrete number of casualties or what happened to the Polish prisoners taken in the battle. Now, this battle, its story, has entered the realm almost of myth, and you may be skeptical of not just the details, but the overall concept, but let me be the first to put that to rest for you. This battle is what Sabaton chose to write a song about, but there are several other shining examples of determined an excellent Polish defense against overwhelming odds during the German invasion. The Battle of the Bzura, the defense at Hel Peninsula, even the remarkable evacuation of Lot, the Polish national airline, of its planes, machine tools, and factory equipment to Bucharest in the face of dual invasion, all attest to the grit and will of the Polish defenders, with which you might not be familiar because already during the war, the Allies crafted a narrative of a heavily inferior Poland, easily overrun by the mighty Germans, in order to reinforce how aggressive and dangerous Nazi Germany was. Mm. So, the idea of Polish horsemen fighting hopelessly against tanks, dive bombers, and heavy artillery was reinforced in films and articles and has stuck as the popular version of the beginning of World War II. Mm. But it wasn't so. Always remember Power is now going to tell you some things you may not know about the song itself. I was here to tell you the story of the battle and even use it as a metaphor for a spirited defense against an overwhelming enemy. Well, two enemies as it turned out. And just a note here, after the invasion of Poland, and even with the speed of its success, Adolf Hitler's generals warned him time and again to wait before attacking in Western Europe, which he originally planned to do already in October 1939, because the strong Polish defense had shown them their own weaknesses, and they did not think that they were yet strong enough to win. Now, you said that this was the song that really made you famous in Poland. How did that happen? Was it planned or just one of those things? Oh, no. Now, this is another part of the videos I like. They talk about the song. They talk about the making of it, the lyrics, and a little bit of the backstory behind it. That's always great. Uh, it was not planned at all. So we were sitting in the backstage area at the Sweden Rock Festival in our tour bus. Right. Watching internet, watching there was something going on. So much attention towards a fan-created video on YouTube, which suddenly gained a lot, a lot of views and comments. A fan-created 
Sabaton video. Yes. So you had nothing to do with this. We didn't have anything to do with this video and it became wildly popular in a short period of time. By then, this is in 2008, you have different charts on YouTube. You right. have historical, political, musical charts on YouTube. Yeah. And we were top charting on all of them. In so the world? Yes. Okay. And it was it was 40 to 1. It was a Polish guy that made this video. Yes. So what happened? Did it, I mean, did you were number one for weeks or? No, no. It was just for a few days before this was taken off. There was a copyright infringement and the video was taken down and blocked after yeah. a few days. Right. However, yeah. it reached around to a lot of fans all across the country of Poland. Yeah. Including, it reached to a descendant of the captain that we sing about in the song. Right. And this guy was cool. a filmmaker contacting us, wanted to do an okay. official music video for the song. For If you want us to check out that video, type it in the comment section below. The only way we do things is because of you guys and gals uh, informing us about what's going on and what we should check out. And it's because of all of you and how vocal you were about checking out Sabaton's history YouTube channel, we're doing this stuff now. So, uh, again, your feedback is fundamentally important. And if this is what interests you, type, type, type in the comment section below. 40 to 1. Right. So we went down to Poland to where the battle actually took place, right. to Wisna, where we filmed some footage when we were walking around in the battlefield, in the scenery. Mm. And uh, we also played a concert yeah. in Gdansk where we used live footage to cut this together to an official music video. Wow. Okay. And now, now by this time, because of the video and stuff, was there like a, a big Sabaton hype in Poland? I mean, what happened there? Well, suddenly Sabaton got a very big hype inside of Poland. But was it just among like the Polish kids or was it like across Polish society? And I think it was all across the society. Okay. And it was mainly a lot of the older generation who yeah. find this very interesting because this was a story who could unite the Polish people. Students wanted to read about this okay. and not about the propaganda that was written in the, in the history books sure. that they grew up reading about. Then did you continue doing like bigger, bigger tours of Poland? Or, or? We kept doing more and more tours in Poland. Mm. And in 2009, yeah. we came back for what we called Always Remember Tour. And uh, it was for a couple of shows all across Poland. One of those shows yeah. was actually at the battlefield. At, okay, at Wisna. In Wisna. Wow. Actually, 70 years to the hour after the battle. Right. And uh, the opening act was a full reenactment of the battle. Mm. including uh, mortar attacks and tanks and soldiers and, and hey if you were part of that viewing audience and you saw that uh what was the, what was the experience like that's right shout out to you the people who were actually there at the concert if if you did see it type it in the comment section below planes and it was a very very intense opening ceremony so the for whole it. battle they did the Wow. Yes. Until today, that is still the coolest band that ever opened for us. I, I, it's the coolest band that ever opened for anybody, <laughs> Per. We also did a show in Gdansk okay. where we were approached by somebody we did not expect it to come to a Sabaton concert. So we were sitting backstage just before the show is going to be. Yeah. The promoter of the concert comes uh, into our dressing room and he explains, you have a... Um, a little bit different kind of person here tonight. And we're like, okay, so who is that? Well, it's actually the Archbishop. What? Yeah. The, the, I... <laughs> the Archbishop's here. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. The, Arch, <laughs> the Archbishop. Yeah, we didn't see that coming either. He came onto the stage and a lot of people were complaining about it and booing. But he said only a few simple words. And he said that the church bows to a male band. And then he gave us this sword from the treasury of the Church of Poland. That is so, so cool. And just think how that is when a song, huh. a person or a people or a nation can take a song to heart and make it so important to their lives like that. That's gotta feel really good. It feels great. And uh, the song has kind of permanently edged itself to Sabaton. Oh, yeah. And I do not believe that we could get away alive yeah. by going to Poland, play a show and not performing 40 to 1. It's a permanent song in the Sabaton catalog. They have no choice but to play it. If you don't play it, you're not walking out of there alive. And you know what? Here's how it looks. Always remember, you lived in history. 
right, everyone, here's the deal. Subscribe to Sabaton History, but also gotcha. the regular Sabaton channel. And don't forget to check out World War II and the Time Ghost channel. Also, if you like more of this stuff, check right here for a playlist of cool videos like this. And if you like this and you want to see more like this, please remember to support us on Patreon, all right? It really helps this thing happen. Take care, everyone. That's right. That's right. So uh, here, here's something I, I learned. Uh, the Battle of Vinza. I, I, again, shout out to all of you. All of you made this happen. 40 to 1. The Battle of Vinza. Sabaton history. 001. And you know what? I'm so glad uh, that I started from the beginning, uh, even though I officially did not. From here on out, for American learns. Americans learn. Ha ha. Got it right the second time. This. <clears throat> mm. Let me let me try that again one more time. From here on out on Americans Learn, we are going to be watching all of these videos. And for that, I cannot thank all of you enough. All of you said check out Sabaton History, and we did. And then a lot of you were saying, hey, glad you're checking them out, but could you start them from the beginning? I'm glad I, I found this out here too. I've never heard of this battle, but 40 to 1? If you want us to check out that music video, give us your feedback, and we'll get to it right away. All of you are making this channel happen. For that, I cannot thank you all enough. Um, if you were there uh, when the band was playing, Sabaton was, was playing in Poland, type your experience. What was it like? How much fun was it? Um, what are some of the high points that really stood out? And uh, wow, the Archbishop was there too. I mean, <laughs> stuff that I did not see put on my bingo card. Uh, without further ado, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that ring bell notification. And also, please, please, please support Sabaton History. Please support the original video. The original video link is in the description box below. Until then, keep on winning, keep on learning, and all the best to you. Take care, folks.